Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic Intersymbol Interference. To begin with, let us consider the diagram shown in figure 1 here, which depicts the basic elements of a baseband binary pulse amplitude modulation system. The input signal consists of a binary data sequence BK with a bit duration of 1 TB seconds. This sequence is applied to a pulse generator that produces the discrete pulse amplitude modulated signal x of t which is given by x of t equals summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k v of t minus k t b where a k is the amplitude of the kth pulse and v of t is the basic pulse shape which is normalized such that v of 0 equals to 1. Please note that the value of the coefficient ak depends on the input data as well as the type of the signaling format used. For example, if I go for unipolar signaling format, then coefficient ak equals 0 for symbol 0 and equals 1 volts for symbol 1. On the other hand, if I go for a polar format, ak is equals to minus 1 for symbol 0 and plus 1 for symbol 1. That is why we state the value of coefficient ak depends upon the input data as well as the type of the signaling format used. Continuing, the pulse amplitude modulated signal x of t is then passed through a transmitting filter which has a transfer function of ht of f. The output of the transmitting filter is the signal that will be transmitted through the channel. The channel itself has a transfer characteristics of hc of f and the transmitted signal may be modified during the transmission as per the characteristics of the channel. In this discussion, we will assume that the major source of degradation in the channel is dispersion. Further, we will also assume that the channel is noiseless. Then the output of the channel is passed through a receiving filter which has a transfer function of h r of f. This filter output which is y of t is then sampled synchronously with the transmitter with the sampling instance being determined by a clock or a timing signal that is usually extracted from the receiving filter output. Finally, the sequence of samples obtained which are y of t i are used to reconstruct the original data sequence by using a decision device that compares the sample amplitude with a predetermined threshold. Let us assume that symbols 1 and 0 are equally likely. Therefore, the optimal choice for the threshold is halfway between the two representation levels of symbol 0 and symbol 1. If the sample amplitude exceeds the threshold value, a decision is made in favor of symbol 1. On the other hand, if the sample amplitude is less than the threshold, then a decision is made in favor of symbol 0. Lastly, if the sample value equals the threshold exactly, then a decision is made by flipping a fair coin. Let us now come back and write an equation for the output of the receiving filter which is y of t which is given in this equation here y of t equals mu into summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k into p of t minus k t b where mu is a scaling factor and p of t is the shape of the pulse at the output of the receiver which is also normalized such that p of 0 equal to 1. Note that the normalization of p of t at time t is equals to 0 as per equation 3 means that the total area under the curve of p of f equals unity. Coming back to equation 2, we note that the shape of the pulse has now changed from v of t to p of t. I will come back to the previous equation. You see the shape of the pulse at the transmitter output is v of t whereas the shape of the pulse at the receiver output is p of t. The reason behind this change is due to the cascade connection of the transmitting filter, the channel and lastly the receiving filter. Therefore, we can now relate the shape of the pulse at the receiver output and the shape of the pulse at the transmitter output in the frequency domain by using the equation mu into p of f equals v of f multiplied by ht of f multiplied by hc of f multiplied by hr of f where p 
of f and v of f represent the Fourier transform of p of t and v of t respectively and ht of f, hc of f and hr of f represent the transfer function of the transmitter, the channel and the receiver respectively. Coming back to the diagram, we now note that the output of the receiving filter which is y of t is sampled at time t is equals to i t b. So, we will apply this condition to the equation of the output of the filter which is y of t. So, y of t i is now equal to mu summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k into p of i t b minus k t b. You should note we have now replaced t by i t b as per our sampling instant. So, when I sample the output of the receiving filter which is equation 2, at the sampling instant t i equals to i t b, we have to now change this t to t i and this t to i t b and that is what is written here. We will now split this equation into two parts for values of k equals to i and for every other value of k. So, when k equals i, you will note this will change to k t b minus of k t b and we already have said p of 0 is 1 as per our equation 3 here. So, when k is equals to i, this complete term reduces to mu into a i because k is equals to i and that is what is put here. For other values of k not equal to i, the equation is retained as it is. That is, you can see mu summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, but k not equals to i a k p of i t b minus k t b. Now, in equation 5, that is this particular part, the first term which is mu into a i is produced by the ith transmitted bit. On the other hand, the second term represents the residual effect of all other transmitted bits on the decoding of the ith transmitted bit. This residual effect is called intersymbol interference. So, let us now discuss a little bit on how and why intersymbol interference is created. In physical terms, intersymbol interference arises because of imperfections in the overall frequency response of the system. For example, when a short pulse of duration 1 TB seconds is transmitted through a band limited system, the frequency components that constitute the input pulse are differentially attenuated and more importantly differentially delayed by the system. This means some frequency or amplitudes are more affected than the rest. Therefore, the pulse appearing at the output of the system is dispersed over an interval longer than tb seconds. This is illustrated in figure here. This is the output of the transmitter and as you can see, we have a pulse of a certain amplitude AK. Whenever you want to transmit symbol 1, please note I have used a unipolar format here. And you can also see the pulse shape is rectangular and is defined exactly over an interval of 1 TB. Whenever symbol 0 is transmitted as per the unipolar format, the transmitter is turned off or in simple words, no pulse is transmitted. What is important in this diagram is to note the amplitude and the time durations of the pulse. They are fixed. On the other hand, when you pass this particular waveform through the channel and if the channel is dispersive in nature as per our current discussion, we just said that the pulses will have a duration longer than 1 TB seconds. This is illustrated in the second diagram here. You see, the transmitted pulse between 0 to TB is of amplitude AK and duration exactly TB. Whereas, at the receiver output, you will note because of the channel dispersion, the width of the pulse has exceeded 1 TB. I have intentionally colored this extra part of the pulse by black just to indicate you the effect of intersymbol interference. Further, we also noted that some of the amplitudes are going to be much more affected than the rest. So, if we just come back to the first diagram and see what is the amplitude, we have AK, whereas at the receiver output, it is mu into AK. This means it is not just the pulse duration that is going to be affected, it is also the amplitude. That is why when we were writing the expression for the output of the filter, we had a mu which is a scaling factor involved in the output. Therefore, by looking into this equation, we can conclude when a sequence of short pulses 
are transmitted through a system the dispersed responses originating from different symbol intervals will interfere with each other thereby resulting in intersymbol interference now let us come back to this diagram and understand what is the effect of intersymbol interference for the very first pulse which is actually indicating symbol 1 here at the receiver output we will sample at exactly 1 tb that is what we have done you please note ti equals to itb so for the first symbol i is equals to 1 so when i come back and sample this waveform at t is equals to itb i am going to exactly extract the pulse from 0 to 1 tb since this is the very first pulse transmitted and there are no any previous pulses the residual effect for decoding this very first pulse is zero so this pulse is not affected by intersymbol interference let us now come to the second bit the second bit in fact represents a symbol zero now when i transmit symbol zero it is exactly between the duration 1 tb to 2 tb at the receiver output you will now note because of the intersymbol interference caused by the transmission of the first pulse, a part of the first pulse has now come into the duration of the second pulse. So, I can say this extra part that has come to the interval of TB and 2TB is because of the residual effect of the previously transmitted bit on the current transmitted bit. I can extend the same principle to the third bit which is actually from 2TB to 3TB. Now the symbol 0 which was supposed to be between TB and 2TB has extended from this part till this part. Again this shaded part of the waveform represents symbol 0. So you should note symbol 1 which is the third symbol at the transmitter is starting from this part. So you can once again understand that the third transmitted bit is affected by the residual effect of the previous two transmitted bits. If the intersymbol interference is too severe, after a very large number of pulses, the effect of ISI may be such that the previous symbol may completely overlap the current symbol duration, causing a decision error. So, what one must do is to eliminate this part of the equation, the second part of the RHS of equation 5, to make sure the ISI does not exist. In an ideal scenario, in the absence of ISI, equation 5 can be rewritten as y of ti equals to mu into ai. This is because we have now assumed there is no intersymbol interference. So, if you are asked to design the transmitting and receiving filters, then the first and foremost important objective should be to minimize the effects of intersymbol interference and thereby deliver the digital data to its destination with the smallest error rate possible. Right. So, that is about the discussion on intersymbol interference. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.